In this video we're going to make a firewall that you can't walk through and we're going to do this by looking at all the game object children in a game object. So first we need to make the actual fire uh, that we can't walk through. So we're going to make an empty game object container. So game object create empty call it firewall and we also need some some particle effects so assets import package uh, particles and click import when that's done you can go to standard assets uh, particles fire or really anything you want but I'm gonna use fire okay so this is sort of what it's gonna look like I want a couple of these and I want the, that we can't walk through them so with this item selected do add components box collider you can maybe see there uh, the cube is a little too small. I'm going to make it X is 3, the scale. Um, the Y will be 6 high and the Z will be 3. So that's you know, a pretty generous box that we won't be able to walk through. And that's one of them. We want to, on, up here, click and drag to put this into firewall. Now firewall, the empty game object, is apparent. So if I move firewall, it moves everything that's inside it. Right now there's just fire, but if we copy fire, control C, control V, or edit copy, edit paste, we have another one, and I move this. Now we have two fire things, and if I click firewall, the container, and I move it, they both move. So we want to make maybe three and put it in here. and position them about right. And I'll make one more. There you go. So that's a pretty good looking uh, firewall that we cannot walk through, I think. Yeah, you can see all the colliders overlap. That's good. So now we need to make a script and assets. If you don't have the folder scripts, right click, create folder scripts, go in that. And somewhere in there, right click, create, C sharp script, call it firewall, and go open that up. So first we need a function to get all the children of the firewall, so every little piece of the firewall. That's going to be an array list, get all children, and you're going to give it the parent. So we need to make an array list for the answer, call it children, it's going to be an array list. And we're going to go through each child and then add it to children. So we're going to say the child count, in this case it's 3, so i is going to be in this for loop 0, 1, and 2. So we're going to get the child, it's going to be, we're going to take it from the, the parent, it's transform, which is like the container. We're going to do get child, and you can do get child 0, 1, or 2. So I'm going to do I, and then children, we're going to add child, and now we're going to give back that answer. Now to test this, oh, mm, yeah, so the answer of this is actually a transform, but it needs to be a game object. So a transform is always associated to a game object, and you can just type game object. So we're going to want to test this. So in start, I'm going to write this. Get all children, just give it itself. The parent will be the firewall itself. And we're just going to write to the console some text, the name of the child. So now when we save and we go back to Unity and add the component to the firewall if you haven't. So now in the console, it wrote three things. It wrote the three children, but it didn't write the children of the children. We also want inner core, outer core, and smoke. The way this works is our function gave us all these but it didn't give us any of the children's children. So actually every time we find one, we need to run the same function on this. So 
So normally this is the parent. We want to get the answer from this as well and say this is the parent and add that. So that's going to be one more line here. If child.transform.child count. So if the child we just found has its own children, then we're going to add also all the children of that child. And this is actually going to call itself. This functions in itself. And it'll keep going, it'll stop when it gets to the end, when a child has no children. And then it's going to return children. We save that, press play. And now we've got a lot more, which is good. So if you click on one of these particles and look at the renderer, if we turn off the renderer, it's going to immediately make the fire go away. You don't really want to do that. We're going to turn off the emitter so it'll stop making new ones and fade away like that. Now we're actually going to make this a cycle. It'll turn on and off and on and off. So we're going to make, we're going to keep track if we're turned off. And we don't actually need this anymore. We're going to make a coroutine to do this. And we're going to call it cycle. And I'll explain this in a moment. Wait for seconds. So three. Actually five. So this code here is going to happen immediately when we when we, wait <laughs> up here and start. We need to start the coroutine. Okay, so this will happen just once. But even though it happens once, cycle is never going to stop. So when cycle comes here, it's going to be true. It's going to go here and do this. It's going to wait for five seconds. It'll give program control back to Unity. And then Unity, after almost exactly five seconds, it'll come back. And it'll come back here and do this. Wait for five seconds, and then it'll come here, and it'll jump back. And it'll keep going forever through this. So here we need to turn on the fire, and here we need to turn it off. Oh, this has to be new. Okay, so we need to turn off the appearance and turn off the collider. So we're going to make two functions, set emitters. So we're going to, for this, we're going to go through all our children, get all children of ourself child in get all children. There we go. Actually, we don't need these. We're going to first check if the child has the component uh, particle emitter dot does not equal null. So if it has one, because you can't just assume it has one, it'll not be happy. Then it's enabled state is is enabled. So we gave this function we're planning on giving this function true or false. We're going to set this to true or false. Oh, it's not enabled. It's emit. Enabled will just shut it down immediately. But we need to turn off emit. So it'll still work. It just will stop producing flames. For the collider, we're going to copy this. We're almost done. Set box collider. Same thing, except this is box collider, and instead of emit, it's enabled. And now up here, we can do set um, emitters to true, so it'll look like it's there, and set box colliders to true, so that we'll run into it. And then down here, just do false. And if we save and play, this is pretty close to what we want. So I can't walk through. It's good. But you notice I can walk through too fast. It's because when the fire turns off, just when it turns off, that's when we can walk through. So we want to actually turn off the appearance of the fire and then wait a second or two. So all we're going to have to do is put another one here and another one here. Maybe, okay, so we can turn on, whoops, turn on, turn on the appearance, wait two seconds, turn on the collider, wait three seconds, turn off the appearance, 
wait two seconds, turn on the off the collider, wait three seconds. That should be a little better. And if you want sound, I'm going to add an audio source to the firewall. I have a fire sound, click and drag, and loop. And when we play, you can hear fire now. I can't walk through, but just as it's ending, I can get through. Also, just as it's starting, I can zip through, but not when it's really burning. And you're going to want to make sure that you can't just jump over your wall. So make the colliders tall or change your level. Um, and the noise always plays even when it's off. So I leave that to you to uh, fix that.